If Wes Craven was the master of American horror, then Toby Hooper was its rebel. He was a clear visionary who traveled the seedy, rustic landscapes just beyond the small town peaks of David Lynch's Americana nightmares. Now, for my list, I'm not including Dangerous Tonight or The Apartment Complex because those are the only two Toby Hooper films that I've not yet seen. Otherwise, here are my top 20 Toby Hooper movies, ranked in order of my preference for them. Number 20, Toolbox Murders. The only Hooper flick that I just straight up didn't enjoy watching. And that's an extra shame here because there was so much potential. It had me at the start, but then lost me and it kept losing me at times when I could have been one back. Number 19, Night Terrors. I didn't hate it. It just kind of fizzled out after a promising start. Robert England is in it though, so it's worth watching just for him. And that will not be the last time I say those words during this video. Number 18, The Mangler. Robert England is in it, so it's worth watching just for him. It's also probably the best movie ever to feature a homicidal laundry machine possessed by a demon. Still, later in the list, there's a much better Stephen King story to watch than this one. Number 17, Mortuary. It's not good, but there's just something bizarre enough about this movie to make me like it. Together, we can stop the making of graveyard babies. Number 16, Crocodile. I did not expect to like this one, and I definitely didn't expect it to be any good, but I was pleasantly surprised. I doubt I'd go so far as to call it good, but it's at least enjoyable as low-budget B-movie fun. Number 15, Invaders from Mars. I saw an edited TV version as a kid and loved it. Unfortunately, it didn't hold up that well when I rewatched the full version as an adult, but I still like it. It's just a little disappointing since it was the second film by Hooper that was written by Dan O'Bannon. Number 14, Jen. I liked it better than the critics, primarily because it brought something new with the UAE setting and the all-Arab cast. I thought the way it dealt with the westernized lead's struggle with identity was fresh and interesting. I say give it a shot. Number 13, The Heisters. This is Hooper's first film, and it's a short, so there's not much to it. Still, it's a must for Hooper completionists, as well as fans of the classic Hammer horror films, especially if you enjoy some good slapstick. Number 12, Masters of Horror, The Damned Thing. The lesser, in my opinion, of the two Toby Hooper entries in the Masters of Horror series. The Damned Thing is spotty, but where it succeeds is with a lingering doom that bubbles just below the surface. Number 11, Body Bags, I. The anthology film Body Bags is mostly a John Carpenter work because he directed three of the four stories, so this placement is just about Hooper's single segment. It's fun, especially for Mark Hamill fans, as this was made soon after his early 90s return to the public eye. Number 10, Spontaneous Combustion. I watched this one for the first time this past October, and holy crap it took me by surprise. It's so bizarre and reminds me of Cronenbergish body horror. Also, Brad Dourif is perfectly intense and he lights up the screen. Number 9, Masters of Horror, Dance of the Dead. Robert England is in it, so it's worth watching just for him. But I also think it's Hooper's best work from the second half of his 50-year career. It's not on the same level as his early days, but subversive just enough to give it a shot. Number 8, Life Force. Without knowing the names Toby Hooper or Dan O'Bannon who wrote the screenplay, I rented Life Force from the local video store as a kid because I thought it had something to do with the Nintendo game of the same name. I was so wrong, and I'm glad I was wrong, but I still laugh that they allowed a child to rent this awesomely effed up movie. Number 7. Eggshells Hooper's first feature-length movie is a head film. It's kind of like an inverse Easy Rider with a bit of Stan Brakhage visual experimentation at times. Some sequences are terrific and with clever camera work. Overall, it's quite a trip. Number 6, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. I hated this one at first because I thought it was just trash and making a mockery of the original. I didn't realize it was intentionally different and not trying to replicate the past. 
I've watched it multiple times since, and now I see it as hilarious fun that stands on its own merits. Number five, Eaten Alive. I long skipped this one because post-Jaws creature features just aren't really my thing, but turns out it's more of a fantastically sleazy crossbreed of Psycho, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and Last House on the Left. Add a pre-Kruger Robert England, and it's a must-see. Number four, Salem's Lot. The first adaptation of a Stephen King work for television, and second for any screen after Carrie, I was fortunate to catch a replay on TV back in the 80s, and it scared the crap out of me. Very creepy and atmospheric, and the floating vampire kid knocking on the window is one of the spookiest scenes of all time. Number three, The Fun House. Perhaps the most underrated Toby Hooper movie, and it's arguably the most quintessential Toby Hooper movie. His lens refracts the dark carnival of life where beautiful monsters confront and are confronted by the undesirables who reflect their ugliness. Number two, Poltergeist. We often hear stories of movie producers hamstringing a director's vision, but Poltergeist is a testament to what can happen when a deft overseer, here Steven Spielberg, adds a touch of their own magic while still allowing raw filmmaking talent to shine when needed. It's a rare occurrence that can result in a classic. Number one, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Much has already been said about how this gritty, grimy, terrifying film is one of the most influential horror movies of all time. Just the idea of seeing flesh ripped and ground up by a chainsaw grossed me out. Yet, the relative lack of gore underscores just how brilliant this movie is. From the first viewing, it became my single favorite horror film of all time. All right, that's it. I would love to hear what you think, so if you would, let me know in the comments below. How would you rank Toby Hooper's films that you've seen? The best, the worst, your favorite, least favorite, the ones you hated? And until next time, thanks for watching.